today I am working on a new project with this, a new mold that I got and I'm super excited to give it a try. This is um, a notebook cover and I'm sure you've probably seen these, they're pretty popular. But this one actually has, it looks like a dragon's eye design on it. It's got scales and the eye, and I thought this looked really cool in the pictures, so I thought I would give it a try. So what I'm gonna do for the design is I'm gonna paint, do some um, dry painting with mica powder on this side, because I think with the scales and just all the different angles, I think it looks super cool. Um, for the eye, I am going to Go with the gold and i'm going to actually try using two different things so this this is actually brass from advanced metallics this is real brass tiny tiny metal flakes like the size of glitter but they're heavy and they sink and then this is mica powder this is brilliant gold from pearl x so i'm going to brush this on first and then brush this over it when I've just brushed the metallic flakes, they don't give like a f complete coverage. They do give a nice shimmer, you know, a nice sparkle, but they don't completely cover an area. So that's why I wanted to then go in with the Brilliant Gold after that. Then for the rest of the piece, I am using this Chameleon Mica Powder from Island Micas and More. This is called Dragonfly, and it's a purple... Looks like it goes from like purpley pink to an orange color. So that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of it. And then the back, I'm just gonna pour black. I'm gonna pour black um, resin over everything. So to start with, let me grab a paper towel here. Let's move this guy out of the way. Um, when you're dry brushing, you want to use, I use a makeup brush, but you can use any kind of brush really, but it helps if the bristles are natural fibers. Um, if you get a brush with synthetic fibers like polyester um, or rayon, they tend to be really staticky. And the natural fibers, they, they do get staticky, but it's not as bad. Um, so I'm just gonna dip this in. I'm gonna try not to get it <laughs> anywhere else in the mold. I'm just going to kind of push it down. I'm not really dragging the brush because these little flakes, they, they'll move. They don't stick to the mold as good as the mica powder does. I'm just kind of tapping it in place where I want it. And I just kind of want it in the middle here, like that. All right, so I'll close this up, and then I'm gonna do the gold mica powder. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off in between. I like to give it just a light tap. I'm trying to be really careful. I don't wanna go outside the lines, but I will. I am definitely gonna go outside the lines, that happens. So I'll show you how to clean that up before I put the um, the chameleon powder down. And then I'm going to take this, there's a lot of loose powder sitting in there, and I'm just gonna dump it out over my trash can. I could have dumped it out over the mica, but I didn't wanna get any of those metal flakes in there, so. All right, so now I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna start with some tape. So I'm gonna get some of these metal flakes that kind of flew around. All right, then the gold. So it didn't go over too badly, but a little bit right in here on this corner and a little on this corner. So I'm just gonna clean that off. So there's a couple different ways I do this. So I start with 
Q-tips and rubbing alcohol. My rubbing alcohol is in a little spray bottle. <laughs> um, but that's what I start with. And that will get the bulk of this off. It's not gonna get 100%. And it did run a little onto the gold. I'm just gonna let it dry though. I'm not gonna try, I thought about dabbing it. I actually didn't dab it. <laughs> I'm just gonna kinda let it evaporate. I think it'll be okay. All right, so I'm just Going through here with the Q-tip. And it looks like that got most of this gold off. All right, so that's the first thing I do is the Q-tip with the rubbing alcohol. That seems to get rid of the majority um, of the loose powder. If you have any that is stuck in like really tiny areas or in, in a corner or something like that, that's when I dig out the um, baby wipe and my little dotting tool. And I just wrap the baby wipe around the dotting tool. And now I can get into the teeny tiny areas. But the baby wipe doesn't take the mica off as good as the alcohol, so that's why I don't use the baby wipe just for everything. To me, the alcohol works the best. And I've also done this with a paper towel and just use rubbing alcohol. It just really depends on kind of what you're in the mood for that day. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to see if I missed anything. There are a lot of these little metal flakes. They're so tiny and so lightweight and they don't stick to your brush very good. They're not staticky like mica powder. So they do tend to fall off as you're working. Okay, so I think I got most of the gold off. Um, all right, so I've got the chameleon. And I just had a thought around the eye. There's little eye ridges. And I'm kind of thinking I might do different colors around, just around the eye ridge, other than this um, chrome that I want to do on the scales. So let me go grab a couple more micas. I'll be right back. All right, so I grabbed this silver. It's really just a really super dark gray. And I grabbed another one of the island micas. Um, chameleon. This one's called Scorpion, and this is like a pinky orange to green. So, give it a try. I don't really know exactly what this is going to look like because I have never used this mold before. So, all right. So I think I want to do the gray, just around the eye. And I'm gonna, since I was using gold before, I'm gonna dip it in and then I'm gonna wipe the brush. Cause I wanna make sure that I don't get any of that gold mixed in. So when you're doing this dry painting with the mica, um, you want to do, like I did the eye first and then I'm working my way out and it's because once the mica is down, unless you remove it like I did, that is what's going to be visible. You can put mica on top of this and the gold is still what you're going to see. Um, so I try to do kind of like the most important areas first that I really want to have good definition. I do those first and then I do the rest of the piece. All right, so we got this dark gray in there. I don't know how dark that's actually gonna be, but we'll find out. I'm gonna go tap this again. Okay, now I'm gonna use this scorpion. These chameleons are absolutely stunning. All right, 
just going to paint this in here. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies. It's not quite as obvious. I didn't realize these were so deep until I just started um, putting the powder down. So that's kind of cool. This is going to have a lot of definition. So anywhere that I miss that I don't get mica powder is going to be black. So that's kind of my theory for leaving this ridge bare because that's going to be black then and it'll look deeper and more sunk in. I hope, I think, <laughs> my theory. All right, so let me tap this off again. And I'm just going to take my little baby wipe and I'm just going to wipe this ridge off. I did get a little bit of dust on there. Yeah, see, it just doesn't work quite as well as the alcohol. Rubbing alcohol really gets that mica off. All right, I'm just going to blot it, pick up any of that. Uh, alcohol before I put my next color down. Okay, now the dragonfly. I'm going to just wipe my brush off again. Just trying to get as much of that off. You can use different brushes, of course. I just try to have as little clean up as possible so I tend to just keep using the same brush <laughs> okay so this is purple and blue shift with it looks like a hint of maybe gold or orange I'll have to tilt it in the light to really see but this looks so pretty I'm just making sure I got everything. So all these little, little tiny holes. <laughs> so I'll make sure I get all the mica in there. All right, I'm gonna go pat, you know, turn it over again. Look at that. Ooh, that's pretty. It's gonna look so cool when it's demolded. It'll look even better than this. And my camera is not picking up all the color shifting that's going on. You guys <laughs> cannot even see how gorgeous that is. All right, so I'm just going to take another little Q-tip. I want to just clean off this ridge again because I really do want this to be black. Okay, so I think we're ready for resin. Let me clean up some of this stuff, get my resin ready, and I will be right back. So I'm just pouring black resin. Today I'm using the Mix All Black. Does not take much to get a nice, opaque, beautiful black with this. So I am using Unicone resin today. I wanted something thinner that could get into all those nooks and crannies. So I guessed three on this and I was definitely off. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to mix up some more resin for sure. You know what, now that it's spreading, three might actually be a pretty good number. 
you don't, I, I can't overfill this um, because I don't want to cover up the little holes where the ring binders go through. Um, so I don't want to like over dome it or get, or just like I said, pour too much and end up covering those. And it, it is spreading out into these corners. So I would actually say three ounces is pretty much right on the money for this back back piece. It is really thin, so I would say make sure whatever resin you're using is something that is going to stay nice and hard. Um, if you have a resin that is bendy, it this piece might be too thin for like a bendy, bendy resin. All right, now we'll see if four, this is, oh, that was four ounces in that cup. Never mind. so this is four ounces. So I have four ounces here. I'm definitely gonna say I'm gonna need more. <laughs> so I'm just pouring slowly. Starting at the low spot. Covering up all this beautiful colors. <laughs> okay. All right, so that was four ounces. Now I'm gonna try and do some educated guessing here. The back piece took four ounces and it's about as deep as what this piece is to the top of the design, but there's still depth in here I need to fill in. So I'm going to guess probably, so four ounces plus maybe two more. So I'm going to guess six ounces. All right, so I'm going to mix up, I'm going to just be safe. I'm going to mix up seven. I'm going to mix up seven more ounces. I'll be right back. All right, so before I pour it, I'm just gonna torch this little bit that's exposed. So I don't wanna pour on top of bubbles. That will just drive them down into the resin and they'll just have to rise up again. All right. Seven more. Let's see how far this goes. That was like a perfect guess. <laughs> wow, okay. So the front mold takes 11 ounces and the back mold takes four. All right, I'm glad I went with seven instead of six. Okay. All right, so I cannot wait to demold this tomorrow. I'm just gonna take my dotting tool and just run this around the edge. Now you don't want to do this um, aggressively <clears throat> because otherwise you're gonna remove the mica that you painted on there earlier. So I'm just doing this very lightly I'm only touching the side edge. I'm not going all the way down to the dragon scales. So I just want to make sure there were no bubbles that would be like on the edge of this piece. A little hair. All right, so we'll let this cure and then we will demold it tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. 
Okay, everything is all cured and I'm super excited to get this unmolded. <laughs> Let's start with the back piece. We'll save the best for last here. Comes out nice and easy. Simple back, not much to that. All right, now the good part. So I did have a little bit of an overflow when I moved my tray. Managed to catch it though before I lost too much. mica powder stuck in the mold so I'm assuming there's going to be some air bubbles on the finished piece we'll see all right that looks so pretty oh my gosh I don't know let's see if the camera is picking up this gorgeous iridescence it's not really well, kind of coming through on the camera. But you can kind of see how this has got some of that gold. And then the blue. And then purple. This is really pretty. So yeah, the areas where I've, I showed you where the mica was still in the mold. You can see. Let's see if I can get it. In the, yeah, like right here. Couple tiny, tiny little air bubbles on the tips of these. So I could have um, used my dotting tool to maybe push the resin down into some of these these pointier bits to avoid those air bubbles. But they're not real. Um, they're not super obvious. I mean, there's so much going on. I think this looks really cool. All right, so. Um, I want to get rid of, there's like a tiny little lip here. And rather than take this over to my sanding station, these are nice straight edges, which are super easy to take care of with a deburring tool. So I'm gonna do that. And you just run it on the edge. And the nice thing is, this isn't really sharp enough to cut you. I've seen some people do this with just like a box cutter or razor blade and I think it's safer to use the deburring tool and that's what this tool is made for actually this, this was made for removing these edges on pieces on cast pieces so I always do one side just give it a couple passes I save these little curly things too. <laughs> if they're not clear, I save the colored ones and they look really neat in clear castings. All right, then I flip it over because it's kind of hard to get the corners where you're starting. You can get it at the end, but it's hard to get it where you start. So I flip it over and then I'll do just these corners from the bottom side. Just run my fingers over, make sure it's smooth. And you could use a nail file for this. Um, I have a sanding station with an electric file. It's kind of like a Dremel type of file. You can use that. All right, I'm gonna do this one too. Okay, so I've got my paper. This is, um, this takes A5, that's the paper size. And 
and you can get this lined. I, I decided to go with the unlined paper. And then I have gold and silver. And I wasn't sure which one I was gonna use. Let's see which one I like better. I guess I'll go with the gold because it, it matches the eyeball. Let's see, I think you just pull these guys open, huh? Oh, there we go. could be easier if they're all kind of lined up. <laughs> Get it in these little holes. All right, paper time. I should probably put the cover on, huh? <laughs> You're all probably screaming at me. Forgot the cover. The most important piece. that hope my friend likes it <laughs> all right guys well there you go thank you for tuning in if you enjoyed this please go ahead and like the video subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time take care mm -hmm.